Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you how you can move your player and have knockback forces on your player with a dynamic mode rigid body inside of Unity 2022. So you can see we have the basic movement where the player is moving with add force, and if I let go, the player's movement is slowed with linear drag, but we can also get hit by the slime, and you'll notice it doesn't immediately knock it back to a location, but this is a force that will be reduced over time by the linear drag. So all of the movement and the knockbacks are controlled with add force slowed by linear drag. And that also applies with these little arrows. You can see I can keep running at it. So the player's trying to move up here, but these impulse forces coming from the arrow try to slow me down in the opposite. So on the player game object, you can see at a basic level, the rigid body 2D is set to dynamic mode, which lets you use the add force to move the player rather than trying to move the position on the transform directly. The velocity is going to be calculated with the forces acting on the rigid body. So what's really important here is the linear drag. If this were set to zero, then you would have no friction and the player would just be able to accelerate forever in any direction. So I could just Show that really quick, linear drag zero, and I keep trying to walk down, and you can see the movement gets crazy, the velocity keeps accelerating, it never ends, because there's no friction, there's no drag. This would also make the knockbacks quite crazy for the slimes hitting the player. So to counteract that, you need a arbitrary linear drag value. The bigger your forces are acting on the player, then the bigger your linear drag you might want to make it. These are just arbitrary numbers here with the move speed as a 3000 force and the linear drag is 15. What's important is that the rough speed of the player is what you eventually want. Also note that increasing the mass is going to require more force acting on the object to move it. But for right now, I'm just leaving the mass of the game object set to one. So if we take a look at the player movement script, you can see that the actual function to move the player with add force is pretty simple. So we get the movement import, which is the direction that we want the player to move. And this can come from your keyboard import or another controller. And then you have to find the magnitude that you want the vector to have. So how much force do you want to add multiplied by the direction, which is the movement input? So in this case, it's the move speed force value. So I'm multiplying the move speed here times time dot delta time to make sure that whatever happens, that it will be accelerating the right amount between frames. So on a fixed update used for physics, there should theoretically be only a set number of times per second that this runs. I think that defaults to 50 in Unity. But by using times delta time, you can guarantee that this will be consistent as each second elapses, which is important. So you just need to apply a force vector to the rigid body. In this case, move input times the amount of force. And you'll notice that in this current version of the script, there is nothing else that is actually scripted to change the movement here. So the velocity is being controlled completely by the dynamic rigid body physics. So then if we take a look at when the player gets hit, there is another rigid body add force here. So this knockback vector already includes the direction times the magnitude to get the final force vector. And this time we're applying it as a force mode 2D impulse. Because at that moment where a slime or an arrow hits the player, it's only occurring in that single frame. So that's why I'm using force mode 2D impulse rather than force. Because when you're using force mode, which would be the default here for add force, you see that there's no actual force mode, but really it's force mode 2D dot force. Then this kind of force is something that keeps getting added to the rigid body frame after frame since it's the player movement. So it makes sense to just use this default force mode. So for actually calculating the knockback, what you need to do is find the direction and then you can calculate your knockback force value, however you want to do that. So for calculating the knockback vector, the main thing you need to do is to figure out the direction. So for this knockback physics, it's really simple. We're getting the direction between the slime or the arrow and the player that it collides with. So if the slime comes down from the top and hits the player down here, then the knockback direction is going to be that same direction going downwards. If the arrow comes down and hits the player, then the player gets knocked downwards. So calculating the direction is simply taking the transform position of the collider object, that would be, in this case, the player that the collision is happening with, and then subtracting the transform position of the object, which is going to apply that knockback vector.
And then this will give the direction which the slime or the aerial collides with. You normalize this vector because you only want it to represent a direction. So the magnitude will always come back with a value of one. And then to actually get the magnitude, you just add the knockback force. So in this case, up here at the top, just using an arbitrary knockback force value. Now, currently I'm testing it at a value of 20. This value is much lower than the numbers you would have seen on the player controller because when I apply the knockback force as an impulse, you can see I'm not multiplying it by time, delta time, or anything like that. We're just adding all the force at once. The time factor is irrelevant. And pretty much that's all that's going on here. If you want when the player is moving to have less linear drag than when it stops, basically when the player stops, you can make it stop more completely. What we could just do is set up a variable in our player controller script so that it increases the linear drag when we let go of the keyboard. So I'll go ahead and try that now. Let's add in a public float move drag. And I'll set that to the default of 15. And let's do another value here. I'll call this stop drag and a value of 25. If I come down here in my script, you can see I'm setting a property when the player is moving to true and when it's not moving to false. So, so with that property, you can see that there's a setter function. So in that setter function, we can just check if is moving, then we will set the rigid body drag to the move drag, rigid body dot drag equals stop drag. So when we hit play, you'll see as the player is stopped, the linear drag is 25. And when it's moving, it gets set to 15. So this will have the advantage of if I let go of the keyboard, the player can stop much quicker than it would have otherwise. So I can just kind of play around with those values if I need to. Let's try 50 and I let go and the player can stop almost completely. But when it's moving, it's still using that move drag value of 15. So if I do try to control the drag like this, it's also going to affect the knockback. So if I get hit while I'm standing, the knockback won't be nearly as much as when the player is moving. So that might be a desired effect. You could just use one consistent linear drag, but that's just another idea I have. So that was pretty much it for the basics of dynamic mode rigid body 2D physics inside of the Unity game editor. So I've been Chris, thanks for watching to the end, and I will see all of you in my future Unity content.